Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Saturday afternoon Bible study. <clears throat> I remember once upon a time, it was the Tuesday afternoon Bible study. It was the Wednesday afternoon Bible study. Just turning my lampshade, so I'm not getting... Hello, Mr. Apod. Welcome. <laughs> I saw you in the credits. Found out you was lurking. Wow, do you have a day off? Did you take the day off today? Good to see you, buddy. I hope you're well, recovering and everything like that. We have an interesting Bible study plan for today. I'm going to talk about Israel leaving Egypt. I'm going to have to put something on my arm. Skin is getting dry and a bit scaly. What is that? Is under control, so I don't have to work Saturdays for a while. Well, that's wonderful. I know what it is. I know what it is. I I use the fart sound effect for the for the subs. <laughs> for the sub alert. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody farts in church anyway. Nobody wants to admit it. It's too embarrassing. Is farting in church more embarrassing than farting in an elevator? I don't know. I, I where is my mind going? Let's come back. Look, look. Someone made me a card. Isn't that beautiful? Look at this card. I can't say who, but look at that. I'm gonna bring this in. This is a piece of art. We just releasing our sins to the Father. Oh, brother. No, that's... That's a normal bodily function. That's not a sin. That's that's working as intended. Anyway. I was so impressed by that. So, so impressed. Anyways. Right, I know why we're getting off track, because we need to pray. We need to pray. All right, Lord Jesus, bless this Bible study. Help me not get distracted or off track today. Help me stay focused and uh, pray that you bless our hearts to be open to your word and the leading of the Spirit. Illuminate your word to our hearts and... Uh, uh, enlighten our understanding of the scriptures, enlighten our minds, and we pray, God, for the peace, comfort, and healing and strength of all those who come to study with us. Protect our time to study here, and uh, bless Twitch for giving this, uh, us this opportunity <clears throat> to teach and preach your word in truth unhindered as they have since the beginning and we're extremely grateful for s such a rare opportunity in uh, such peculiar times as this in Jesus name amen I like looking out the window when I pray I'm kind of like looking for Jesus to come 
at any time. Honestly, I half expect to see him every time I look out the window and look at the sky. So, anyways, those are the days we live in. Let's um, make the transition here to the next scene. All right. Hallelujah. Leaving Egypt. In our search for truth, Bible study. Last couple times uh, we studied, we, were, we, we studied about the plagues. It was horrible. It was horrible. Ten plagues. Water turned to blood. Not... Not a cup of water. All the water. The rivers, the ponds, the lakes, the streams in Egypt, they were all turned to blood. The reservoirs turned to blood. They had to dig around the banks of these bodies of water to find drinkable water. Frogs. Everything had died in the Nile. But when the Nile was restored, the currents brought down hordes of frogs. And they came out of the Nile and just overwhelmed the, the nation of Egypt. And then when the plague was removed, the frogs just died where they were. So they had piles of stinking frogs. Literally, piles of dead stinking frogs. And then gnats. Gnats everywhere, since there are no frogs to eat them, right? Gnats, and then flies. Uh, we looked at a video of flies and gnats and stuff like that. And in some places, like in Africa, uh, around, uh, I think, Lake Victoria, when these flies hatch... The clouds are so heavy and they move in. It's like a cloud. It's like fog. It's like fog. And the biggest danger to the people is inhaling those things and getting lung infections. There have been people who died. Cattle disease. All the cattle died in Egypt. They had to go to the Goshen and take cattle from the Israelites. To replace all that died. And then plagues of boils. Sores. You know. Look, I had. I had zits. Everywhere. Recently. I still got some nasty ones. Those are painful. Right. But these just covered their body. The pain. And the torment. And the nastiness. And the revulsion. is just. Something that Job, in the book of Job, Job went through that. So we're in Exodus. I mean, we're going to look at the Amplified Version of the Bible today. I'll post this in the chat. Amplified uh, is a bit wordier. However, it uses a lot of synonyms. So if you're studying... English, this could be a good version to use. There's another version with real simple English called God's Word, God's Word Translation. I've used that one before. Also, the New International Version. Uh... There's a new international reader's version. There's this one, which is real simple. Um, let's try that one instead. New international reader's version. I haven't used that much.
Oh, the Orthodox Jewish Bible. That's curious. I haven't seen that one before. I mean, I haven't looked into it. I haven't read anything from it. New International Reader's Version. Let's look at that today. New International. We'll look at that one today. So, then then what happened? Where were we? Boyle's hit. Oh, right, right. I was going to look at Job. Duplicate. Let's look at Job. This happened to Job, too. Uh, oh, poor Job. He went through a really hard time. Was it Job, Job 2? This is interesting. But now Satan said to God, he said, A man will give everything he has to save himself. So Job is willing to save the lives of his family to save his own life. But... Now reach out your hand and strike his flesh and bones. Then I'm sure he will speak evil things against you. In fact, he'll do it right in front of you. And the Lord said to Satan, All right, I'm handing him over to you, but you must spare his life. Don't be afraid of this. I'll show you another verse of scripture where something similar happened. But there's always a plan and a purpose to what God does. Then Satan left the Lord and went on his way. He sent painful sores on Job. They covered him from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. He got part of a broken pot and he used it to scrape his skin. He did it while he was sitting in ashes. And his wife said to him, Are you still continuing to be faithful to the Lord? Why, why don't you just curse God and die? That's basically what it said. Speak evil things against him and die. Other versions of the Bible, like King James, say, Cur Why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, You are talking like a foolish woman. We accept good things from God. So we should also accept, accept trouble when he said and said. In spite of everything, Job did not say anything that was sinful. That's interesting. So I said I'd show you something else where that happened. And uh, that was in 1 Corinthians. Where Paul is writing a letter to the church in Corinth, he said, It is actually reported there, there is sexual sin among you. I'm told that a man is sleeping with his father's wife. Even people who don't know God don't let that kind of sin continue. And you are proud? Shouldn't you be very sad instead? Shouldn't you have thrown out? Of your church the man doing this even though I am not right there with you I am with you in spirit and because I am with you in spirit I have already judged the man doing this I have judged him in the name of our Lord Jesus so when you come together I will be with you in spirit the power of our Lord Jesus will be with you will also be with you when you come together like this Hand this man over to Satan. Then the power of sin in his life will be destroyed. His spirit will be saved on the day the Lord returns. 
Your bragging is not good. It is like yeast. Don't you know that just a little yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise? Get rid of the old yeast, then you can make a new batch of dough without yeast. And that is what you really are. That's because Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered up for us. Our Passover lamb. Jesus is our Passover lamb. Remember this. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So, this man, that they, they listened to Paul, and they cast him out, right? Because, yeah, he was sleeping with his father's wife, his stepmom. They said, oh, Paul says that's not good. We should get rid of him. Hand him over Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his soul could be saved. Uh, in the second letter to the Corinthians, He said, I know that person repented. You should let them come back. Where is it? This is it. Suppose someone is in this way. He has made me sad so much as all you said. But I don't want to put this too strong. He has been punished. Because most of you decided he should be. This punishment is enough. Now you should forgive him and comfort him. Then he won't be sad more than he can stand. So I'm asking you to tell him again that you still love him. So he's saying now that that person has repented, allow him back in. This all ties together. The plagues of Egypt, Job's sores and boils, being uh, afflicted by Satan, and handing over this sinner, or this saint, who is acting like a sinner, to Satan to be troubled in his flesh to encourage him to repent. Hard times... Times like these are sent to try us, not to destroy us. The plagues against Egypt were not intended to destroy Egypt, were not intended to destroy Israel. The boils and Job's family getting killed by marauders. You know, all his stuff being taken away by marauders and his family being killed in a catastrophe, a weather disaster, a whirlwind, a tornado came, collapsed the house on top of his family, except for his nagging wife. And then being afflicted by boils. God didn't allow that to destroy Job. For Job, in Egypt's case, it was to encourage them to free the Israelites from slavery. That was to do good. In Job's case, it was to give a good example for us of how to endure suffering without sinning against God and becoming bitter. And in the case of this man, it was to encourage him as an individual to repent of his sin so that he could be welcomed back into the church. None of those things, even though Satan was involved in Job's case and in this man's case, none of those things were meant to destroy the individuals, the groups of people, or the nations. It was to encourage right living. Because the soul is more important than the body. And if an affliction in the body will encourage us to make right decisions to the salvation of our soul, God cares more about our souls 
than he does our physical comfort. God cares more about our souls than our physical comfort. And that's, that's exemplified here. God spoke to Job later. Rebuked his friends. And so on. Uh, God didn't destroy Egypt. Though their army was broken. And their economy was shattered. Eventually, they relented and let God's people go. And in this case, this man let his sin go. And that's what brings us back to Exodus with the first Passover sacrifice. When that final plague of Egypt hit, after the hail, locust, and darkness... When we live in sin, we are in darkness. What's this? I can't see nothing. It's not showing the whole thing. Hang on. While we're living in Egypt, while we're living in sin, we're in spiritual darkness. When we understand that sin is death and we repent, we accept the sacrifice of Christ as our Passover sacrifice, as our Passover lamb. We partake of his flesh and blood, his suffering. We repent. We sacrifice the desires of our own flesh to be pleased by sin. And we put sin out of our life. We make Christ our Passover. Remember that picture? that I showed last week. Let me see if I got it here. All right, that's Pharaoh's son after he died. The Passover. Hang on a second. I got it. Blood on the doorpost. When the blood is applied to our hearts, as it was, boy, one second. I gotta, I gotta make this bigger for you to see. There we go. When the door, when the blood is applied to our hearts, and we accept the sacrifice of Calvary, Calvary, we are freed from the bondage. Of sin and death. Okay. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, Mr. A. Pod talked about releasing our sins to the Father. Uh, that's what happens when we repent, not when we fart in church. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that was what the plagues were all about. Not to destroy Egypt, but to encourage Pharaoh and the Egyptians to do the right thing by God's people. So, now, Israel is told as a nation to meet at Sukkoth. They're to leave the land of Goshen, which was the Nile River Delta. Let's look at a map. Let's look at Egypt. All right, we all know about the pyramids and all that. Some people. <gasps> Whoops, I feel wiser now. Good. <clears throat> Some people feel or believe that the Hebrew slaves were the ones that we know that we don't know if they built the pyramids. Some people think they did. We know that they they uh, built treasure cities or 
storage cities. And the Bible names a couple cities that were built by the slaves, the Israelite slaves. It doesn't say that they built the pyramids. It's, it's very well possible that the pyramids were built even before the Israelite, Israelites were enslaved. I want a map. I'm going to look at a map. What's going on? Oops. Uh, what? Why did he do that? Okay. So, here we are. This was the land of Goshen. This is where the Israelites dwelt. Okay, it was perfect for raising cattle, herding sheep, and things like that. And that's why the Hebrews were concentrated in this area. Because they were uh, herdsmen by trade. In general, in general, okay. So they were told to meet at Sukkoth, which was uh, around in this area here. Okay, but then they were they were told to follow and meet down here somewhere. Isn't that interesting? So after they observed the Passover, they were told to go to Sukkoth. What does Sukkoth mean? I don't know. Let's find out. What does the name Sukkoth mean? Uh, meaning and entomology. Definition and meaning. Bible dictionary. Let's look at both. Abraham publications. Let's look at both. We'll look at both. All right, the first encampment of the Israelites after leaving Ramses. What? No, no, I don't like free gifts. The civil name of Pithom. Ah, it was another name of Pithom. Booths. Weavings. Ah. Later, uh, the Feast of Sukkoth, the Feast of Tabernacles. I get it. I get it. That makes sense. There was a Jewish feast that would be celebrated later called the Feast of Tabernacles that the Jews are supposed to observe. Well... They do that in Israel. Let's see. Feast of Tabernacles. Also called uh, Sukkot. Aha. It, it's a tent city. Interesting, huh? Let's see a picture. So they make these booths or these tents, lean twos, etc., uh, to remind them that they were once strangers in a strange land and that they were pilgrims in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Page not found. Okay. We'll close that. And later, they would make a tabernacle for God. He would dwell in a tent. Alright, let's see. Yeah. They used a uh, palm branches and such. 
to uh, put over the top of these tabernacles. Isn't that cool? Sukkoth. Sukkot. Tabernacle. I think that's cool. This is why we're studying, right? So they gathered at Sukkoth. So when they left, uh, when they left Goshen, it was like an army on the march. On that day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of Egypt like an army on the march. The Passover is when the death angel was sent. Let's see, I got a pretty cool picture for that one too. A little scary. Yeah. lot scary so it was then that the Lord said you set apart for me the first boy born in every family the first the first son that's born of every animal of every person etc 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 these were to be set aside and special in service to the Lord um, the Bible says that God views the Israelites, viewed Jacob, the nation of Israel, as his firstborn. Because they were the first nation that was dedicated to serving the one true God. That's, that's what made Israel special. Okay? And that they were the nation that God was preparing to bring the Messiah into the world so that all of humanity could find salvation. As Paul said, salvation came first by the Jews. In other words, the Jews were chosen as the avenue through which Christ brought the Messiah and the gospel was first preached to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. He does that to remind us so that we don't get caught up in, well, the Jews aren't important anymore because we're not under the law and a lot of them still don't accept the Messiah. He says, wait a second, don't forget their importance in all of this and in God's plan. So the God still views the Jews as a special people and he's not done with them. When we read the book of Revelation, he continues to work with the Jews. Okay? And protects the Jews until his uh, second coming. And then the blindness will be removed from their eyes, their spiritual eyes. The veil will be removed from their heart. That understanding will be given them as to who Jesus really is. Right now, blindness in part so that the gospel could be preached to the Gentiles. That was us, non-Jews. You see? So God's not done with them yet. He's not done with them. All right. This is the church age. But their time will come again. You know, that's why we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for peace for, for the Jews. Yeah. All right. Let's go on. So they observed the Sabbath. The Lord will bring you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. He promised your people 
long ago that he would give that land to you. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. It's a very prosperous land. When you get there, celebrate this holy day in this month. So, the, uh, the Jews are to celebrate the Passover to remind them that God delivered them out of Egypt. This holy day will be marked on your hand. It will be like a sign on your forehead. It will be a reminder to you that the Lord used his mighty hand to bring you out of Egypt. Now, Pharaoh let the people go. The shortest road from Goshen to Canaan went through the Philistine country, but God didn't lead them that way. God said if they have to go into battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So he led them to the Red Sea by taking them on a road through the desert. The Israelites were ready for battle when they went up out of Egypt. All right. Oh, repentance is only the first step. Okay? Once we repent of our sins, we have to turn our back on sins and uh, leave the lifestyle of the world, leave the lifestyles of Egypt behind. In the Bible, Egypt is also used figuratively to represent the world or worldliness. See? And when we begin our journey with God, our exodus from sin, we are to leave the lifestyles of sin in the world there are things that we don't do things that we don't say anymore all right we choose to live a life that's separate sanctified that's why uh that's what the term saints means that you are set apart sanctified to serve the lord rather than sin and your own carnal desires. We stop fornicating. We stop doing drugs. We stop drinking. But we don't do this on our own power. We ask the Holy Spirit for help, for strength, and quite often God just delivers us outright from these desires. But some of us still uh, struggle with those desires to return to Egypt, to return to that sinful lifestyle. All right. But that God doesn't ask us to do more than we can bear. He did not lead them straight into Canaan because that would have meant that they'd have to go through the territory of the Philistines and that would have meant open war. They would have been faced with a battle right away. The battle between the border between the Philistines and the Egyptians was an armed border. You see? So he took them towards the south a bit. He took them from here down. I don't know what this is. Maybe the Red Sea was bigger back then. Uh, because it, it almost looks like the Red Sea here is a series of lakes. <laughs> so, uh, there's... I what What are they doing here? Let's, let's find that map of Egypt again. Uh, 
All right. Here's the Suez Canal, huh? I I uh, I believe it is uh, further south than that map indicates. All right. I'm more inclined to think it was down here somewhere where there was more water for the parting of the Red Sea. It does not make sense to me that, I mean, it'd be pointless if the water was only a foot or two deep, right? It would, it would have been a greater miracle for God to drown the Egyptian army in two feet of water than in a hundred feet of water. You get what I'm saying? Let's go on. So God led them towards the Red Sea. Moses took the bones of Joseph, who had made the Israelites give their word to do this. 400 years earlier, Joseph said, God will deliver you and send you back to Canaan, the land that was promised. And when you go, you must take my bones. So they promised Joseph. So, that, so Moses made sure they took his bones. The people left Sukkoth. They camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. Let's let's do a search on that. Etham on the edge of the desert. Let's do a let's do a search. Uh, Bible map. Etham. I want to see this. Are you serious? That that this these maps don't make sense, man. There must have been more water or something back then. I don't know. So Pithom and Sokoth were either the same town or, or one was a suburb of the other. <sighs> All right, so they, they stopped at Etham for a while. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. It guided them on their way. And at night, he led them with a pillar of fire. And it gave them light so they could travel by day or at night. The pillar of cloud didn't leave its place in front of the people during the day. And the pillar of fire didn't leave its place at night. So, let's see. I wonder if Etham is even on the map anymore. I don't know. Alright, let's scroll up a bit. Uh, what did I, what else did I want to look up? Oh, yeah. Pillar of Fire. Wow. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Pillar of Fire. So yeah, it would have looked something like this. Or like this. So they would have had a pillar of fire leading them at night and a pillar of cloud 
by day. So what would have happened in that case is the pillar of fire would have given them warmth in the cold desert nights and light and protection from predators. And by day, the pillar of cloud not only would have led them, but overshadowed them to uh, uh, protect them from the desert sun, from the heat of the desert sun. See? God, God knew what he was doing. All right. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, and he said, Tell the people of Israel to turn back. Have them camp near Pi-Hahiroth, between Migdol and the Red Sea. They must camp by the sea right across from Baal Zephon. Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are, around, are wandering around the land, and they don't know which way to go. The desert is all around them. I will make Pharaoh stubborn, and he will chase them. But I will gain glory for myself because of what will happen to Pharaoh and his whole army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped by the Red Sea. Quite often, when we start walking with God, it seems like we don't know what we're doing or where we're going. In those times and in those situations, we just need to trust in God's wisdom guidance and protection that is a very scary time it's a very scary place and it seems like the wanderings in the wilderness are just wanderings but that is actually a testing time a period of where uh, you're learning to trust God and you're learning to follow his leadings You see? And you're learning that you don't have to know or understand everything that God is doing. It seems difficult to comprehend with our carnal mind. Because our carnal mind is is uh, enmity with God. It cannot understand the wisdom of God. It seems foolishness to us. The carnal mind. Uh, Romans 8 and 7. Oh, look at that. Romans 8 and 7. Romans 8. So, don't live under the control of sin. If you do, you will think about what sin wants. Live under the control of the Holy Spirit or guiding of the Holy Spirit. If you do, you will think about what the Spirit wants. The thoughts of a person ruled by sin brings death. But the mind ruled by the Spirit brings life and peace. The mind ruled by the power of sin is at war with God. That's the carnal mind, the fleshly mind. is at war with God and does not obey God's law. It can't. 
those who are under the power of sin can't please God. But you are not ruled by the power of sin. Instead, the Holy Spirit rules over you. This is true if the Spirit of God lives in you. You see? And then that brings us to a place where this becomes applicable. We know that in all things work, God works for the good of those who love him. All things work together for good. Okay, this, this New International Reader's Version is hurting my face. Let's and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. All right. This also includes when it seems like we're wandering around in circles. That's how our carnal mind perceives certain situations. Where God has us in a holding pattern because he's setting things up. See? And here we find out when he's talking to Moses that he's setting up Pharaoh for one last showdown. And the king of Egypt was told that the people had escaped. And Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them. They said, What have we done? We've let the people of Israel go. We've lost our slaves and all the work they used to do for us. See? When you leave the world behind, when you leave Egypt behind, when you leave sin behind, there will be elements from your past. There'll be addictions that call back to you. There'll be people that you used to party with. They'll call you up. You know, there'll be family members when you're at a family gathering. They'll say, here, have a beer, drink with me. You're not too good to have a beer with me or to drink with me, are you? They'll put you on the spot. They'll try to bring you back into Egypt so that they can feel better about their own sinful state. They'd rather see you fall back into sin than admit to themselves that they are wrong and that they need to repent of their sins. So he had his chariot made ready and he took his army with him. He took 600 of his best chariots in Egypt. He also took with him all the other chariots How many thousands of chariots did he have take the field? They were going to round them all up and herd them back into Goshen like cattle. Officers were in charge of all of them. And the Lord made Pharaoh the king of Egypt stubborn. So he chased the Israelites as they were marching out boldly. The Egyptians went after the Israelites. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen and troops chased them. They caught up with the Israelites as they camped by the sea. The Israelites were where, where God had told them to be. They were right where God wanted them. And so was Pharaoh. Even though it looked like God had set them up for disaster. 
that's the Israelites, even though it looked like God had set up the Israelites for disaster, nothing was further from the truth. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, they looked back. They saw the Egyptians marching after them. The Israelites were terrified. They cried out to the Lord. They said, why did you bring us out to this desert to die? Wow. But they didn't understand that God didn't set them up for failure. He set them up for a miracle to happen, which we will cover next time. That's right. The miracle at the Red Sea. A lot of you feel like you're wandering around in the wilderness right now. When actually, you're in the place that God has appointed you to be. And he's not set you up for failure. But he has set you up to witness a miracle. Amen. Amen. Miracles start with prayer. Some of you need a miracle today. Miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance, miracles of provision, miracles of peace, miracles of comfort, Miracles of faith. Miracles of deliverance. If you have a prayer request, go ahead and put it in the chat now. Uh, we're going to pray for our friend Dawson today. I want you to pray for him and his family. He needs a miracle. He needs uh, deliverance from depression. He needs to see the light of day. He needs the dawn star to shine on his heart. Um, I'm only taking the liberty of mentioning that in the chat because he mentioned it in another chat. If he didn't say something in a public forum, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring it before you, but my understanding is that if somebody mentions something like that in a public forum, it's because they're they really they really want and need help. And uh We've all been there. We've all struggled with depression. And we've all been a place in a place where we need a miracle. So we're going to pray for Dawson. Uh, we'll pray for Burns for his healing. We'll pray, pray for uh, Mr. Apod's continued recovery. For all I know, he's, he's fit as a fiddle already and ready to... Go out do some salsa. I don't know. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Let's pray for um, call sign Scarecrow too. Maddie. You can call him Maddie. We'll pray for him. And uh, Trekkie and Sunshine. Pray for them. Pray for uh, Shackleford's healing and encouragement. Amen. And let's all pray and ask God to give us wisdom and discernment.
and help us not be discouraged when we feel like we're going out in circles in the wilderness and it looks like we're being set up for failure when it's actually the enemy who's about to encounter failure thank you Jesus thank you God for your grace and mercy in our life thank you God for leading us out of Egypt and delivering us thank you God for the Passover lamb of Jesus Christ who died for our sins let your blood cover our hearts and wash and cleanse us of our sins and Lord encourage us while we're out in the wilderness following you that we would trust your leading and that you're guiding that we would be uh, willing to follow your spirit even when we feel like we're going in circles the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain help us to be content to follow you Lord pray for Dawson that you send a miracle of deliverance that you bless him, encourage him, strengthen him, keep his mind, and encourage his heart. Heal burns. Heal and strengthen and encourage Mr. Apon. Bless Sir Galahard, help him Jesus. Protect him, encourage him, and comfort him. Heal Shackleford, Lord, and Provide her daily bread, keep her safe, and encourage her in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Pray for Maddie. Help him, Jesus. Lord, continue to bless this Bible study, to bless and encourage people in their faith, build them up, and to comfort them. Should their heart be pricked with conviction of sin, we pray, God, that you grant them the gift of repentance. We pray for your peace and healing and comfort on all those who study with us who listen and watch this Bible study thank you Jesus bless uh, Trekkie and Sunshine pray God that uh, you provide uh, their daily bread and God that you uh, heal them and encourage them to walk closer with you day by day day by day hallelujah it's a day by day walk just like the song just like the, the music we're listening to day by day God bless you and the rest of your day until uh, we meet again next week, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you.